underwear. Is that all you can think about? Food and sex? Yes. Please, focus. Look out! Louise is so sweet. I think this woman is wearing underwear. I think there's too many people in this elevator. And I think you are all idiots. I'm gonna work. You're in a good mood this morning, Mr. Bracken. Well, I always feel like this just before the Research Association dinner. It's like Christmas, New Year's, and the SATs all rolled into one. Oh, boy, the research dinner. Louise, aren't you jazzed? I thought you loved the research dinner. Researchers are so image conscious. They always judge you by who your date is, which is particularly because I always go alone. Anyway, Louise, I'll be giving the big speech this year, and I need the support of my peers. You really think of me as your peer? Perhaps I misspoke. I have no peers in research. <laughs> but I expect you to be there. What's up, Louise? You seem upset. Mr. Bracken's making me go to that stupid research dinner. Well, why don't you want to go? I'm tired of going alone. I'm tired of doing everything alone. Herman, why can't love be like in the movies or on TV or any other form of popular fiction? I want a storybook romance where you see each other across a crowded room. Your eyes lock. You move toward each other slowly. You fall in love. Then at the perfect moment, he kisses the nape of your neck and he whispers in your ear that question you've been longing to hear. Darling, won't you let me escort you to the researcher's dinner? <laughs> She's talking nonsense. There's no such thing as love at first sight. I guess you're forgetting wet t-shirt night at Bouncy's tap room. Personally, I feel bad Louise can't get a guy. I know how she feels. We've had a tough time ourselves finding the right guy. I mean, girl. <laughs> really, really, I meant girl. Hey, why don't we ask Louise to the researcher's dinner? I mean, after all, we're in a dry spell and we don't have anyone to take. Yeah, yeah and if we're in a dry spell, then Louise is in the Gobi Desert. <laughs> Sorry, I, I thought the ganging up on Louise would divert attention from that guy thing that slipped out earlier. No, no it doesn't. Be. Why don't you come to the dinner with me? Oh, Herman, you don't have to do this. Well, of course I don't have to, but I think it would be fun. Okay, I'll go. I guess it beats sitting around in a bathrobe drinking beer out of a can. <laughs> that's how you spend your Friday nights? No, I assume that's what you did on your Friday nights. <laughs> I swear to God, I'd like to tear her clothes off and jump on top of her. Oh, you're not fooling anyone. You're just covering up for that guy thing. Well, maybe a little, but I still think I can love this guy. I mean, girl, damn it! I'm Herman. I'm Heather. Do you work here? Yeah, I just started a couple of weeks ago as an assistant editor. Really? Assistant editor? Wow. Don't be too impressed. I spent the last two years at Schaffler Press in research, so... How about you? I spent the last two years here in research. And what are you doing now? I'm starting my next two years. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's nice to hear about someone who's made the break. Not completely. I promised my old boss I'd go to that researcher's dinner thing. You're not going to that, are you? Yeah, actually, I am. Would you like to go together? Say yes. Say yes. I agree. This woman is too good to be true. She has brains and wit for me, a body for you, sensitivity for you. What's she got for me? Not a thing. <laughs> so... 
Would you like to go? I would love to. Great, it's a date then. Oh, okay. Okay. Um. Uh. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. We promised Louise we'd take her to the research dinner. But this is love at first sight. If anyone would understand, it's Louise. Besides, I'm sure our date with her is not that big of a deal. Oh, Herman, I'm so excited about this dinner now. Yeah, listen, Louise. I've arranged for a limo and a new dress, but I've made appointments for manicure, pedicure, facial, and full-body herbal breath. Oh, I'm going to get my back looped, too. you got to pay extra for that, but it's going to be worth it. Oh, Herman's going to be the best night of my life. Yeah, about the dinner. Well, we I guess I have to cancel the limo and return the dress and cancel my appointments for manicure, pedicure, facial, full-body herbal breath, but I'm stuck with the back looped. They charge even if they can't. Well, how could you do this to me, Herman? Please. Louise, I just met a woman. It was, it was the kind of storybook moment that we were just talking about. It, it, it's the kind of thing that happens once in a lifetime. No, Herman. The kind of storybook moments we were just talking about involves me. Well, I promise I'll make it up to you. Yeah, how? I am going to set you up on the most incredible dream date of your life. With whom? <clears throat> it's better coming up than it did going down. Thanks for dinner, man. Glad you enjoyed it. Both times. <laughs> I gotta run. It's amateur night in Bouncy's tap room. One of that seedy strip joint in Times Square? No, no. I go to the one in Jersey. You tell them it's your birthday. You get a free lap dance. <laughs> what a classy guy. Louise is so lucky. I can't believe we're asking Jay to take Louise to the dinner. He's a vile, disgusting human being. Okay, fine. We'll go out with Louise and risk losing Heather. That's not to say Jay doesn't have a quirky charm. So you're saying... Oh, shut up and close the deal. <laughs> Jay, don't go yet. What about dessert? I, I baked cobbler. No, thanks, I can't. Hey, made it from scratch. <laughs> All right, Herm. One of two things is going on here. You either want a favor or you're trying to land a fella. <laughs> well, in a way, I'm trying to land a fella. I'm out of here. No. Jay, you don't understand. Are you going to that research dinner? No, I'm not going to that research dinner. I'm a writer. Be like a trapeze artist going to the circus geeks picnic. <laughs> it's a very colorful analogy, Jay, but I need you to go. Why? Well, because I originally asked Louise to go, but you see, I met this amazing woman, Heather, and the only way I can go out with her is if you take Louise. Oh, little Hermie has two dates for the prom. <laughs> All right, hell, I could use the money anyway. <laughs> oh, money. The hundred bucks you have to give me to take her. I'm not paying you a hundred bucks. Fine, that's fine. Louise will just go to the party stag. She'll just sit there by herself, watching all the happy couples and their finery. Ah, well, she's hearty pioneer stock. She'll live. All right, all right, fine, Jay. I'll give you the hundred bucks. In singles, all right? I might want to swing by bouncies afterwards in a limo. What's a limo? What limo? Herm, I'm a classy guy. I gotta take Louise to the geek picnic in style, don't I? Okay, Jay. Now remember, I don't want you to hurt Louise's feelings. It's important to me that she has a good time. Of course she's gonna have a good time. Thanks, Jay. And don't say anything about the money. It would embarrass Louise if she knew I paid you. No problem. Another 50 bucks, my lips are sealed. Louise? Herman, I'm still not speaking to you except to tell you that I'm not speaking to you. Well, when you find out how I've made everything right, you are going to be very happy. Hey, Louise. Oh, dear God, no. <laughs> this is how you're going to make it up to me with this idiot? Louise, I would like very much to be your date at the researcher's dinner. What is this, some kind of joke? No, it isn't. And regardless of what you decide, these are for you. Well, I have to admit, they're very pretty. They're not half as pretty as that blush of rose in your cheek. All right, now you're pouring out a little thick. <laughs> not half as thick as I'd be to overlook the beauty of... All right, now you're making me nauseous. <laughs> not half as nauseous... Jay, shut up! All right. Boy, I know Herman put you up to this, and I have to admit, you're being terribly sweet about it. So, okay, I'll go. Now, get the hell out of here before I change my mind. <laughs> Louise, we're going to have a great time. That. Don't say another word, Herman. I am still mad at you, but I'm starting to get over it. Louise, that's good. You know I'll always be there for you. Well, that's nice to know, you see, because at first I felt rejected by you. And Hold that thought, Louise. Hi. I just my way out to get a baby. You want to join me? Yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm so 
sorry. I feel terrible about that. No, it's okay. It'll just take me a second to change my shirt. Well, it's my fault for taking a chili dog on an amusement park ride. Well, no, it's my fault for screaming. I didn't expect those horses to go up and down like that. <laughs> I can't believe you've never been to Coney Island. Of course you can't, Heather. You grew up in China. And you lived in India. You spent time in England. I did time in England. You were in prison? Yeah, for protesting offshore drilling. It was just for a weekend. Haven't you ever done anything really crazy? I was once detained ten minutes by supermarket security for stealing a banana. <laughs> yeah, it was a fraternity prank. My mother had to come get me. It was really, really embarrassing. <laughs> See, I have to tell you, I had a lot of fun today. This was the best bagel I ever had. Me too. Well, I guess we should be getting back to work. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I uh, guess. I just want you to know that I don't normally do this. <laughs> that's, that's all right. That's all right. I don't do this normally. Where did that come from? Well, I, I wanted to impress this woman with our wit, and there's no way to do that in-house, so I hired a couple of joke writers, Buddy and Sally from the Dick Van Dyke Show. <laughs> oh, how about some farm jokes? These two pigs are talking to a cow. Oh, come on, come on. Are you insane? We're in an apartment with a girl. Could I think of something... Sexy. Sexy? How about me and tights? <laughs> We're not doing Twilight Zone. <laughs> Can we get past the witty repartee and cut to the chase? The chase? Hey, that's a great idea. Maybe we can have her chase us. <laughs> oh, this kid's a riot. <laughs> <laughs> Whose brother-in-law are you? <laughs> I, I cannot believe we just met yesterday. No, usually it's very awkward when you first meet someone. I feel very comfortable with you. I, I feel the same way. I've never shared that banana story with anyone. I think that's probably for the best. <laughs> this is going rather nicely. Okay, where are the prophylactics? I don't know, Egypt? <laughs> the condoms, you idiot. We have to get condoms. Aren't you being a little presumptuous? Well, just in case... I'll just be a second. Hurry back. <laughs> Herman? Hey, I'm right here. Oh, my God. Those are the hairiest armpits I've ever seen. Well, exactly how bushy were they? <laughs> they, they were bushy. It's no big deal. Well, how bushy? I don't know. Average bushy. It's not a big deal. Average for a man bushy or average for a woman? <laughs> Jay, average for a woman is clean shaven. So they were average for a man. <laughs> I don't know. A young man or an old man? <laughs> what difference does it make? Oh, are you, it makes a big difference. Well, I'm sorry, Jay. I don't know how to answer that. All right, let's, let's try a different tack, shall we? Uh, when do you suppose she shaved last? I don't know. How does one gauge something like that? By the size and shape and texture of the bush. <laughs> so I ask again, how bushy were they? Looked like she had a rabbi under each other. <laughs> Conservative or reform? <laughs> I don't know, Aaron. This whole thing sounds pretty gross. I'm sorry, but I gotta go with Jay on this one. Oh, come on. Are we so pathetic? I know I am. Are we so pathetic that we're gonna change our mind about a woman over a little hair? It gives me the willy something awful. An exciting woman like Heather comes once in a lifetime. Just deal with it. Why don't you just ask her to shave him? Jay, don't you think that's a little presumptuous? Well, Hetty, Hetty. If you're going out with a guy and he asked you to shave a part of your body you don't normally shave, would you find that offensive? Well, that doesn't really apply. I shave everywhere. I like to glisten. Oh, gee, there's no need to discuss Shut this. Shut up, Herm. Teddy has the floor. Look, Jay, I'm sorry that you have a hang-up over something as trivial as body hair, but I'm not going to let something like that ruin what could be, for me, a perfect relationship. Well, good. Good for you, Herm. 
Luis, the limo will be by Saturday at 7 sharp to pick you up, okay? Okay. I'm really looking forward to this. Surprisingly, so am I. All right, see ya. You still mad at me, Luis? Yes. <laughs> no, I'm sorry I've been so hard on you, Herman. I have to admit, Jay seems quite genuine about this, and you've really been very charming. I guess it means that Jay really can be a gentleman sometimes. Herman, it's really bugging me. You just gotta tell her, man. Shave them pits or take a hike. <laughs> back and done with the speech yet? Not quite. Oh, damn. I'll be back in five minutes. Eddie, just sit here. This is his big finish. And there's no prouder boast than to say, Ick benign researcher. <laughs> Bob, you stink! We're taught in here. Yeah, let me help you with that. Is it my imagination, or have they grown out a little in the last couple of days? No, they've grown out a lot. I thought we were okay with this. We are, we are. It's no big deal. Besides, it's not like anyone's going to notice. Whoa, I didn't expect to find Don King under there. Any liquor at this table? Don't worry, Mr. Bracken. I'm sure many people enjoyed your speech. Of course they did. They were in trance until some enemy of knowledge yelled out, Boo, you stink. Come on, Mr. Bracken. I'll buy you a drink. Well, listen, if Jay comes back, tell him I went out to get some hair. Uh, air. You know, it's kind of cold in here. Maybe you should put your jacket back on. No, I'm fine, thanks. You know what I would like to do? Make another one of those bagel trips where we end up back at your apartment. Uh, yeah. Hey, Herm. Hey, oh, hi, hi, I'm Jay. I'm Heather. Very nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm gonna go out and get a drink. I'll be right back. All right. Boy, you weren't kidding. What? Her pits look like the road company of Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> Jay, where the hell have you been? The bathroom. You've been gone for an hour. Yeah, yeah, I ate nothing but fruit till noon. Jay. All right, all right, I, I had to pick up my other date. What other date? Well, you sprung for a limo. I had to take advantage of it. Jay, you are supposed to be on a date with Louise. How can you do that? Yeah, don't you worry about the logistics, pal. I'll figure it out. Thanks for your concern, no. Jay. Come on, Herman, let's make the most of this. Let's dance. <laughs> oh, dear God. <laughs> Where you been? You didn't hear? Several of us got locked in the freezer. The freezer? Yeah, uh huh Look, Jay, I know you don't really want to be here, so maybe it'd be best if you just left now, huh? Oh, I really appreciate that. I'll see you around. Bye. You gonna be okay? I was really looking forward to tonight. Really? I didn't think it mattered to you that much. Well, it did. Oh. Oh, well, gee, I feel terrible now. Is there any way I could make this up to you? You can let me hit you in the face as hard as I can. I would, uh, but I have a glass jaw. All right, then, give me one dance. We'll call it even. With the way I dance, I'd rather you hit me in the face. Hey. Oh, Jay, I was just bluffing. I was setting you up for the right. All right, all right, I'll dance. I'll dance, but I'm telling you, I'm not, not very good at it. That's okay. A year ago, I wasn't much of a boxer either. You're not a bad dancer. Really? Because I could not feel more awkward. Why? Oh, I was a very uncoordinated kid. My nickname was Doofus. I thought your nickname was Chubby. Yeah, I had a lot of nicknames as a child. Can we keep dancing, please? Jay, you don't have to feel self-conscious around me. We're friends. <sighs> Louise, I'm really sorry I ruined your evening, and I hope you don't think any less of me. Couldn't possibly think any less of you than I already do. <laughs> well, nowhere to go but up. Well... Thanks for the dance. Sure. Louise, how about one more? All right. Are you okay? I'm fine. Fine. 
I think I'll have another glass of champagne. Waiter! <laughs> Where's some punch? Would you stop doing that? I didn't do it! Neither did I. I did it. You? But I thought you agreed it was no big deal. It is a big deal. It's a big, hairy deal. <laughs> you can rationalize it, you can talk it away, but it's a simple fact. When it's all said and done, a woman with underarm hair is an oddity. A freakish crime against nature. And as a wise man once said, it gives me the willy something awful. Heather, I don't know how to put this, but it, it really bothers me that you don't shave your armpits. Oh, is that what's going on? I know, it's silly. And I thought I could get past it, but I can't. Well, I knew there were a lot of shallow men out there who couldn't deal with a woman breaking convention, expressing her own individuality. I just didn't think you were one of them. Look, I have no problems with you expressing your individuality. I just wish you did it like everyone else. Do you hear what you're saying? It's not me. It's, it's society. I mean, the media has perpetuated this physical ideal, and, and I'm as much a victim as you. More, really. It's a nice try, Herman. No, maybe we could compromise. How? Could you maybe trim them back a little? <laughs> Goodbye, Herman. Well, Heather, come on, can we work this out? I don't have anything to work out. You do. Heather. Please, you won't believe what I just did. I just blew it with Heather. Is there something wrong with me? She's exciting, she's smart, she's fun. How can I let something so trivial come between us? I can't just let her walk away, can I? Louise? <laughs> You're absolutely right. I should go after her. Thank you for this talk. What are you talking about? Who? Population oh of Europe, and now with the Eastern Bloc opening up, that's about 200 million women. Let's see, 200 million women averaging about two pits of peace. Help me with the map, Pinhead. Where's Europe? Maybe you've heard of Euro Disney? Oh, yeah, I love those Greek sandwiches. <laughs> Keep shaving.